Hello po, mga kapamilya, kapuso, kapatid, ka-investa at kabarkada. Isang magandang araw ng Miyerkules, ika-21 ng Abril 2021. Ito po ang inyong lingkod, Benji Chodoro, nag-aanyaya na samahan ninyo ako sa isa na namang edisyon ng The Stock Market Today. Ako po ay isang retired bank officer na nagsimula mag-invest sa Philippine stock market noong 2007 at ginagawa ko po itong report araw-araw na nagsimula po ako ng Agosto of last year. I also report the latest news on your favorite and most active stocks and if you like the content, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. And kung meron po kayong stocks in mind na gustong ipa-review, paki-comment po sa comment box at akin pong ipa-prioritize. Dalawa po ang ating news item today. Ang una po ay ang pagbigay ng emergency use authorization sa bakunang Janssen at Covaxin at ang IPO ng Monde Nissen kasama ang results ng trading sa ating Philippine Stock Exchange ngayong araw, April 21, 2021, dito lamang sa The Stock Market Today. Ang una po nating uh, news ay tungkol po sa bakuna na Janssen at Covaxin from the Philippine Star, Janssen Covaxin Get Nod from FDA. The Food and Drug Administration or FDA has granted emergency use authorization to Janssen of Johnson and Johnson and Covaxin of Bharat Biotech for the respective COVID-19 vaccines. FDA Director General Eric Domingo announced yesterday the approval of the EUA applications of Barrett and Johnson of Johnson and Johnson filed on January 22 and March 2031 respectively. Our experts have evaluated their applications and decided that the benefits outweigh the risk, he said in at a public briefing. But the issuance of EUA to Barrett was conditional, Domingo said, as the company has yet to submit one documentary requirement. They have already been inspected, but their certification has not yet been released, he added. Barat will have to submit a certificate of good manufacturing practice before it can start bringing its vaccines into the country. FDA data show Barat's vaccine is given in two doses 14 days apart. It has an efficacy rate of 80.6%. According to Domingo, they issued the EUA to Janssen despite the an ongoing investigation abroad on blood clotting incidents among some vaccine recipients. Overall, the benefits of using the vaccine outweigh the risk of clotting, which is one in every one million. He added that if the Janssen vaccine would be rolled out in the country, the DOH may have to issue clear guidelines for their use. The single-dose Janssen vaccine has an efficacy rate of 66%. Okay, that's good news. And um, actually, the Philippines is the second, the second country which has the highest uh, number of uh, vaccines with uh, emergency use authorization. Our second news is on Mondenisen's uh, IPO from the Philippine Star. Also, SEC clears Mondenisen's record 72.45 billion IPO. Corporate regulators cleared the planned stock market de debut of food manufacturers Mondenisen Corp, paving the way into the largest maiden share sale in the country's history. In a statement on Tuesday, the Securities and Exchange Commission said it approved the historic 72.45 billion IPO by Nissin. The mega offer will run from May 17 to 21, while the listing date was set to May 31. The company behind the hugely popular Lucky Me Instant Noodles is planning to initially sell 3.6 billion common shares at 17.50 each, which may be bumped up 
by another 540 million common shares if there's robust demand for the offer, excluding expenses and other charges. Nissan is, Nissan is expected to rake 60.61 billion in net proceeds, which will be used for capital expenditures. That's uh, 26.52 billion pesos. Redemption of a convertible note at 17.31 billion and repayment of loans at 16.78 billion. As it is, the Nissan IPO, including overlotments, is so massive it beats the combined capital raised in all IPOs seen over the past two years. The company is set to beat capital raised by Robinson's retail holdings, which hold the title of the biggest IPO when it debuted in the Philippine Stock Exchange in 2013. Nissan will be the second company to go public this year following the DDMP RIT Inc. The timing of listing comes at a time local firms had been tapping the financial markets to raise cash following lockdowns and that crippled their operations and tarnished their balance sheets. Okay, so that's our news from the Philippine Star. Let's now take a look at uh, our Philippine Stock Exchange Index. The PSEI lost 61.03 points, that's 0.94% down, to end at 6439.39. Nasa 6500 na tayo yesterday. So it is uh, just uh, moving bearish to sideways with the RSI at 41.37. And since our uh, price is below our candlesticks the sentiment is bearish to sideways with support at 6390 to 6400 on nearest support now on the market summary 108 companies advanced 92 declined while 52 remained unchanged the all share index is also down by 0.61% while of the six sectoral indices only the services registered a gain of 0.85% uh, the rest of the um, sectoral indices is down led by the holding companies at 1.02% decline as for the most active stocks we will be reviewing the top 10 Ali ICT, TEL, SM, BDO, LTG, JGS, SMPH, MEG, and Converge. So let's now start with Ali. Okay, Ali almost ended flat. It lost just 5 centavos from the closing price of last yesterday's at uh, 33.05. Support is still holding at 33, 33 pesos is the nearest support. We have an earnings report here with net income for the period ending December 31, 2020 at 10.99 billion, down 70.69%. So that's the um, earnings report of uh, Ali with uh, support at 33 pesos then after ali ict one of my favorite stocks international container terminal services okay it ended with a very thin candlestick actually it ended flat at 130 opened at 129 and 90 centavos but the closing price is still above our candlesticks our uh, moving averages rather the exponential moving averages of 20, 50, and 100 days is still below the closing price of 130, indicating a bullish momentum on the stock. Plus, the RSI is at 61.94. This has been the fifth, one, two, one, two, three, fourth green candlesticks, green candlestick rather, before it ended flat at 130. In the meantime, the nearest uh, support of uh, ICT, let's place it at MO100. That's 122.70 to 122.80.
and then after ICT tell one of the more durable index stocks wow tell had a would you call this a breakout probably a breakout because it has been the highest uh, this is the highest price since um, March 19 almost a month ago or more than a month ago yung price nyo ngayon was uh, 56 pesos higher than the previous close at 126 gaining 4.52 percent in the meantime the resistance of tell the nearest I would say would be here at 1328 or 1325 to 1328 would be the nearest resistance of tell and the nearest support would be here at 1218 that's my take on tell with a uh, breakout today uh, with volume tell is the one of the most one of the more durable stocks in the index after tell let's uh, see let's review sm okay sm almost ended flat actually it lost nine pesos or 0.92 percent to end at 968 and the sentiment is actually bearish since the closing price is below our three moving averages so the support level of sm i would place it here at 148 to 948 rather to 950 you earning support niya. net income is 34.33 billion down by 50.57 percent all because of most probably of the pandemic so after sm bdo part of the sm group okay bdo had a red candlestick today losing 90 centavos to end at 105.60 but uh, it is now nearing the resistance of 110 110 to 111 is the nearest resistance of sm and in general the movement of the price of sm is sideways since uh, the price in general is piercing the candlesticks the the moving averages is piercing through the candlesticks okay ltg the lushitan group the Lushitan group is uh, in general in sideways movement with the MA100 as our support. That's 13 point or 13 pesos to 13.10 would be our nearest support. In the meantime, the nearest assistance of uh, the LT group would be here at 14 to 14.50 would be the nearest resistance. In general, the stock is moving sideways. And then JGS, JG Summit. Okay, JGS had a red candlestick. It lost 2.74% or 1 peso and 60 centavos today. And it is resting on support. And support is 56 at 56.50 to 56.80. Yan po ang uh, nearest support ni JGS with a bearish sentiment. Yung earnings niya is also down. 397 million is the net income down 99%. This is as of December 31 compared to December 31, 2019. And then SMPH. Okay, SMPH is also down. Let's see the earnings report. 18.48 billion, down 53.23%. With support at uh, 33.90 to 34 pesos. But in general, it is bearish to sideways ang kanyang movement with the RSI at 45. And then, MEG. Okay, MEG is also down. The nearest support, I would place it here at 3 pesos. So it is bearish in sentiment since the candlesticks, the moving averages are above the candlestick 
which is a bearish sentiment. After MEC, our final stock will be Converge. Okay, Converge is uh, up 10 centavos. Not much, but uh, it has been steadily moving upwards. And it is now actually at uh, resistance at 1910 to 1920. Yun po resistance ni uh, Converge. With support at, let's place it at MO50 at 17 90 to 18 pesos ang nearest support. Yan po ang ating report sa stock market today, Wednesday, April 21, 2021. Ito po si Benji Chidoro. Nagpapaalala, mag-ingat sa COVID at sa mga scam and investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagtangkilik sa ating mga subscribers. And see you again in our next episode. God bless. Bye for now.